Alpha Omega London, makers of shoes, creator of waves in the fashion industry, introduces the Fashion Vanguards podcast. Our aim is simple, to open minds, listen to opinions, share knowledge and start conversations. Our podcast series unravels fashion's many guises and tackles head on the current issues that matter, getting honest views from the mouths that matter. We at Fashion Vanguards believe it is time to stop talking and make change. The labeling of mental disorders or mental illnesses carries social stigma and negative connotations which prevent us from tackling the issue. In this series, we address the growing concerns of more and more people who are suffering or have recovered from mental ill health within the fashion industry and the creative sector as a whole. Let's welcome our panelists. Hi, I'm Nazina, bastion of creativity, instigator of change within the fashion sector. Hi, my name is Clara. I uh, run an experimental music theatre company in London and I'm interested in finding different processes for collaborative creating. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm currently a student at Condé Nast College and I major in fashion communications. Hi there, I'm Diana. I'm a second year student in London College of Fashion, studying fashion design and development, and I'm very interested in changing the mindset towards the fashion industry. I'm Ashwini Deshpande, designer, dancer, dreamer, and host of the Fashion Vanguard podcasts. I go to London College of Fashion and hope to change the world one dress at a time. Thanks for tuning in to the Fashion Vanguard's mental health series. In this episode, we'll be critically reviewing the fashion industry from a lifestyle, work culture and social perspective, discussing in what ways it is particularly harmful to mental health. Then we'll be looking at those risk groups followed by the review of charities or public bodies providing help and guidance within this specific sector. Can I ask you to critically review the fashion industry in what ways it is particularly harmful to mental health? Is it the issue we're dealing with as a result of certain types of work culture, lifestyle, expectations or personality traits? I don't know. I, I think, but first of all, before we actually answer the question, fashion is very unique because it, conf- it sort of fuses together the art form um, of, 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 you know, fashion or art or however you want to describe it um, with business. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does have commercial value. Yeah. Yes. So you yeah. need to make a profit. Yep. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, it doesn't matter how talented you are you are not going to succeed. You're not going to be um, existent, essentially, Mm -hmm. within the market, within the industry. So that's by setting that tone alone kind of helps you understand where we are with fashion in comparison to all creative sectors and art forms. Yeah, definitely. Compared to fine art and things, I think that's definitely something that differentiates um, fashion. So in that sense, if we look at um, definitely one of the reasons I'd say that mental health is such a big issue in creative sectors is um, because if there's not as much job security, there's not as much financial security. And I mean, considering what you said in that sense, fashion should be more financially secure than a lot of other sectors, which means actually it shouldn't have as many um, mental health issues. That is true. That's Mm -hmm. not the trend that we see. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, fashion is also a culture. It's an art as much as it is an industry. It's a business. So the lines are blurred between work and private life. And as a a fashion business demands a total different approach as if you are a painter, for example, or, I don't know, um, a songwriter. And then you've got the the sort of culture, the work culture, which is, you know, sort of long hours. Yeah. I think it expects... Work hard, play hard culture. And I think it expects 24-hour interest and availability in fashion, I really think. Because you need to be there, you need to network as well, you need to have connections, you need to be innovative, you need to produce, and you need to sell. Yeah, and in order to do all those things, you really need to be in the know of everything and, like, at the forefront. Because also I know the word fashion is, um, like, um, the derivation of fashion is quite a far, far, far synonym of now, right? Of fashion is now. Mm. Yes. So you have to be now, Yeah. but you have your life and your life maybe is attached to the past or a future, but you have to be now. So that I think that's uh, another thing that maybe could cause mental health um, issues. Do you know what also another thought that I had was that, um, you know, it attracts a lot of creatives who are very hopeful and have faith that it doesn't matter what sort of um, unnatural environment they're currently in they believe that it will work they believe that they will become and so what they do is they almost endure 
um, what we would consider to be, you know, quite, you know, unhealthy practices or environments just purely for the sake of one day, you know, sort of yeah. achieving their mm-hmm. goals. And I think that's, it's almost like they, it's not that they're normalizing um, quite a, a destructive um, environment or culture, but they're normalizing their endurance for it. Absolutely. I mean, when you enter the fashion industry, you're expected to do all these internships and all these different things. And people are always saying it's fashion, like you have to do it. You don't have a choice. It's fashion. You know, it may be unpaid. It may be, you know, working um, 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day. But that's what it is. If you want to be in the industry, that's what you need to be up for. So Mm. I think that it's because a lot of times the industry itself is um, so glamorized because it's a visual industry. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people get lost in literally like the glitz and glam, like as cheesy as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Everything is just seen as like, oh my God, like fashion, you know? Like (laughs) you just say that you go to fashion school and people are like automatically like so interested in it. Um, I think that maybe that's why you get so lost in this, like it's like everywhere but the fashion industry because it's so glamorized that I think people end up maybe getting lost or like lines end up getting blurred. But see, my point is that fashion, everyone thinks that fashion is superficial. Yeah. But fashion is not superficial. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I want to work in an industry and I want to change the fact that it's not superficial. Fashion is about being aware. Fashion is about social context. Fashion is about economics. It's about Mm -hmm. politics. Absolutely. It's about Mm -hmm. sustainability. It's about... Thought of completely different things than and and you guys can probably even like say say more on this, but like I was quite, I guess like quite shocked that I thought we would spend more time talking about fashion itself in in you know fashion school, and we spend a lot more time talking about what's going on in the world and mm-hmm. politics and like what you said like social issues and especially now with sustainability and the environment, like we spend so much more time talking about that than the fashion industries and, and designers and things like that, because that you can look up, but like the actual, like you, you, the actual like education that comes with fashion is so much more broad and so much more. And it is, you're right. It, it, it's something that's taken as like so superficial, like, Oh, that's cute. Like you want to do fashion. You want to be a little like, no, it's a huge driving force look, in the industry. Right I don't want to be a dressmaker. I want to be a problem solver because yes. being a designer, design is mm. about problem solving. It's not about dressmaking. Yes. Beautifully said. Yeah. Could I just actually ask um, that that was actually a, a, a very good um, point to to make. But can I just actually ask, are we aware when we enter the industry, are we aware of the health risks? Do the health risks offer a sense of danger and excitement that make fashion or just any other creative sector that far more alluring? Is it is it the the, the idea that yet we could end up a complete mush or we could be incredibly successful point that I think I when you say successful first of all um being successful in a lot of other sectors and a lot of other industries is simply you know making your the amount of money to have a decent lifestyle but yeah. being successful in something like fashion or a creative sector is very different from that being successful is really being at the top of the industry it's being right. something else um it's not your regular definition of success I'd yeah. say yeah and um I don't know. There's do people try to fit into that the norm, the idea that they have of that glorified life, like you said. Um, you know, you work till twelve a.m. and then go to a party for the rest of the night, and then come back and work in the studio again. You don't get any sleep. Like that's uh, that's completely glorified. But also, there are people trying to almost like live that glorified life. What what do you think of that? Like, is is that true, or is it sort of something people have to do? Is it something they choose to do? Is no. it? I don't think I don't think it's something that you have to do. I think that the whole hustle is so glorified, especially for the like the younger generations. Like it's something that's so I mean, obviously, social media for me is like such a huge thing, not only for us as I guess creatives in the industry, but also the people consuming fashion. Right. And um, I think it's something that that's like, oh, if you're not doing a good job, it's because you're not working hard enough. You're not hustling enough. Yep. You're not you're not losing sleep over this. You're not this. You don't want it that bad. And like as, being Absolutely. on the topic of mental health, like it is something that so many times you if you don't put your mental health first and I went through this so much. But like if you don't put your mental health first, it's going to put itself first at one point or another. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to completely like I kind of wonder, though, whether there is um whether that's something that you're now starting to be able to do because I guess like 
because I guess like what you what you said, the, the kind of every art form has its own glorified lifestyle. If you go into music, you're more likely to end up in like a van somewhere drinking lots of whiskey. If you if you're in the fashion industry, I don't know. Maybe you t- you take more cocaine. I don't know. Um, you know, like every it's almost like every um, every art form comes with their, it comes with its own drug, with its own addiction, with excesses. its own with mm. its own excesses. And like and I guess like the, like it's not just because everyone who's in those industries just happens to like those things. It's also because of business. a lot of business is done in those settings. You know, like, what do you do as an artist if you don't drink any alcohol? And most right. gallery openings have a lot of alcohol. People get drunk together and then you go to a party and then at, like, three in the morning, that's when you say, like, oh, we should totally talk about a project or something. I kind of... Mm-hmm. I, I think it would need, a, a, a like, an infrastructural overhaul as well to, to make sure that people who... who 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 don't who can't who can't physically are incapable of supporting that kind of that all, covering all those three corners of the triangle that you mentioned, um, that those people can succeed as well. I think that's a that's a big. I think it's also just perception. People think that they can't succeed, like you said. Um, people say things like, "Oh, okay, so if you don't do drugs, if you don't drink, then how are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? How are you going to work in this setting? How are you going to network with all these people and all of those things?" Not necessarily true. I'm, there are loads of successful people that aren't into these things. I mean, Anna Wintour doesn't, let alone drugs or anything, she doesn't even drink. She's never had alcohol. And um, so it is possible. It's just a perception that people give into. Yeah, a lot but of times, if so. we talk about Anna Wintour, let's talk about um, her background. Her let's background talk about, and her, yeah, how yeah. privileged yeah, right, she was. Right, yeah, right. yeah, I mean, she, mm-hmm. I'm not doubting her work or her how she got up there, but she was privileged <laughs> yeah so so does that mean are you saying that you have to either be privileged or you have to give in to um i think you had to things. in the past mm-hmm. but now i think i'm so grateful i was born <laughs> in this century i think now you could be successful by working hard without having connections without having you I really think now is the time you could do things by yourself. That, that's true, actually. I think what um, the younger generations um, are, are, are very lucky um, in in utilising is this, um, that there's no need now for social class to be almost the, you know, enabler, um, ex- it, enabler I mean, of success. You can be yeah, absolutely anyone. Extent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. To some extent, of yes. Of course, yeah. But now with social media, absolutely. I just think that it's, I think social class works in uh, more subtle, maybe more more subtle ways than it used to. Mm, yeah. um, you can, if, you, if it's a question of going for opportunities, you need a certain amount of confidence. Traditionally, like that amount, that confidence is imbued, like you either get it from your parents or like, I mean, a lot of people get it from private schools. I guess it's it's like, it's it's more of a subtle thing. It's a, it's, it's how you've, whether you feel you're entitled to being there, to taking opportunities. And I think a lot of people who come from less privileged backgrounds aren't. Um, but the fact that it, that, that, institutions aren't run by like plummy uh oxbridge graduates i mean they're probably still oxbridge graduates so they're just not as plummy anymore um, you know like it's it's still it's still there very much so i think it's just su- much more subtle these days so who do you think is the most vulnerable within the fashion sector to suffer from mental illnesses and why is it mm. designers students models um oh boy photographers? i don't think there's any hierarchy but i do feel designers um you know do have that pressure to innovate and they have that pressure to innovate <clears throat> clear my phone um they have the pressure to innovate consistently mm-hmm. um and you know also satisfy the needs of maybe those that are investing in them so there's a, a lot of financial pressure as well it, it's i think designers have quite a tough time but yet still um you know, models, etc. They also experience quite a hefty amount. I think that the moment you, yourself is your own tool, I think you're vulnerable. Yeah. 100%. Essentially, especially if you're a designer and you're leading a really uh, like a big position, for example, like a creative director of a brand, or even if you are directing your own brand, your own business, because right. you're not just a designer. You're a PR. Right. You are a trendsetter. You're a trend forecaster. You are a pattern cutter. You have to network with people. You have to talk with investors. So you are not. You are five different um, jobs in one person. If right. you're a designer and you're sort of leading a brand. Mm-hmm. 
Just a quick reminder, you're listening to the Fashion Vanguards podcast hosted by Alpha Mega London. Please subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on and give us a review. And if you would like to get in touch, please drop us a message at info at alphamegalondon.com. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Also, another thing is, I think nowadays there's a lot more pressure to um, be successful at a younger age. Because like a lot of times in most industries, you need experience to really understand the industry, to be able to, for instance, start something of your own, to be successful. But now in the fashion industry, a lot of people are just fresh graduates. Maybe they don't even have degrees and they just go out and start something, which, Mm -hmm. um, first of all, financially, it's very difficult. And in general, in every way, it's a lot of pressure. And if you don't have the right experience, you don't have enough experience to do that it can be very mentally um sort of it can be a huge strain mentally but how about students yeah I was gonna say I think that um it's hard because as students in the fashion industry we're both consuming and wanting to and we're we're aspiring to become this the part of the industry you know like I'm talking a lot about being in the industry but technically I'm not in the industry yet and um I mean I I I think that it's like, it's what you said. I don't think there's a hierarchy necessarily of like, oh, models suffer more or designers or students. But I think that definitely now with the use of social media and what you guys were saying, the pressure to succeed at, at a young age, like my my course, for example, it's it's two years instead of three years. So there's no real breaks and it's just all very compact and going, going, going. And I feel like that that in itself is like, creates like already a really, really big pressure. Um so yeah, I mean, I can talk about this forever, but I think that every every area sort of like suffers in their own, I guess, their own way. Yeah. I think the general idea is this rush, like everyone is rushing mm-hmm. to something. So that's why I think it, it keeps you rushing and it keeps you un- unfocused and at the same time focused on something. So it's very blurred on your own identity as well. So then there, here it goes, the mental health. Yeah, instant gratification, that, yeah. I think, is at the forefront of a lot right also, now. Also, you lose mm-hmm. the perception of yourself. Mm-hmm. Who am I? What do I want to achieve, actually? Yeah, and what is important to me? What else is important who? to me? What about family? What about other do things? Do I lose what about my values what to about... be successful? Yeah. Or do, do I not? Do you feel more isolated as students? Because I'm just trying to also understand why suicide is actually increasing amongst students, which we'll talk about later. But is there is there a feeling of feeling isolated um, and, and not really connected with... Yeah. You know, I feel like sometimes I there's I have a really big fear of authority. As a student, sometimes I think I want to be really adult and want to handle my things so well. And then I end up doing the opposite because I feel like I just want to like conform and impress and almost perform for those that are above me so they can notice me and sort of validate me, right? I think that's the thing. It's like we're constantly looking for validation. And when we, exactly what, what um, Deanna was saying, like when we lose ourselves in, in what we're making and who are we even doing this for, like that's I think that's when I feel the most isolated is because I feel like I'm not doing anything for myself and I end up just putting other people's priorities in front of mine. I, I recently had this exercise with myself. It's a very silly example, but some, some, it worked for me. So obviously we, we students in my university and Ashwini's university, we tend to make our digital portfolio in Instagram. We create a page basically an account for our own work so we could like advertise ourselves so I was creating that page for about about me and I I stopped I was like but how am I going to show myself on social media and then I was like but like me so I I had this conversation with myself because I imposed myself to show someone who's different on social media Mm. because of my and I said no if my work is not uh, um, honest then why am I doing this um I kind of wonder whether that pressure to be authentic is isn't also a massive curse because because in in a way because you could, you know you can can say like of course well you're an artist that's your art you the art is you in every in, in in every way but at the same time I sometimes wonder whether we wouldn't all be a bit happier if we would let the art the so called artificial the so called different be a product and be very aware of that this like this is me producing something because I guess I think this um, I think it's also just a 
trend this kind of uh and, and it's it's and it's interesting people will talk about authenticity and hold it up as a as a as a value in and of itself but then you you ask like what do you mean by authentic and suddenly it's a very limited amount of parameters again which then brings us back to the what is meant what is what is normal and what you what is then abnormal and i think this uh um yeah i kind of it just strikes me with instagram that it 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 pushes for some kind of authenticity that it has to com that it has to abide a certain trend of what is authentic at the moment there's just something Absolutely. so obscene yeah. and yeah. ironic about that it, and, and here we go with the fashion industry you're authentic but also you need to be commercial right yeah so, yeah. so there's the this line? right so there's a compromise now that we've mentioned instagram influencers because now they've you know stepped on the scene as being potential at risk groups um of mental health within mm. or mental mm. ill health sorry within you know, the sort of fashion industry or the creative sector. It, um, it, it's it's not really an area that I know completely well, only because I'm not an influencer, but I have heard stories of, of incredibly successful influencers who have literally had to take a year out. Yeah, I mean, I had a pretty close friend, actually, who was an inf influencer who committed suicide last year. So, um, yeah, she was a classmate, actually. And oh, it was so really sorry. shocking. Yeah, oh, but it was really shocking because, um, I mean, she seemed perfectly happy. She was posting happy pictures on Instagram every day at a different, um, different cafe every day. Um, she was here in London for a year, originally from India. False and reality. Yeah, it really, I mean, I didn't know her too well, but I knew her well enough to think that she was happy. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess it was just the pressure of keeping that up and seeming happy on the outside, but not being able to express that side of yourself that is not happy, that is possibly depressed or anxious. I know lots of influencers from Instagram, they sign contracts with managers mm -hmm. or uh, different uh, brands who they have to advertise. And if they lose followers, then the money's out. Or the success is out, so you have to keep that uh, reach all the time. We, again, you know, going back to what I was saying, there's no real hierarchy. I think there's 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 always this competition, this intense competition, and this intense pressure to perform over and over and over again, which you get with your designer, your model, your student, your influencer. I think I think the other thing that comes into it is that once you turn yourself into a product, and you, you I mean, you first of all, you're better off being self, being aware of what's happening, and and not connected to yourself as closely as possible. But I guess like the other thing is that I mean, people change. I mean, we all know that. I mean, even if, even like a just different weather is going to make you feel different. But if you've turned yourself into a product, into a product like what's the what's the the what do you call it the, the margin of change that you're allowed to go through and everything and I think that's and I think it's just because you were talking about um uh always being happy not being able to express this, express herself with this uh about this lady I guess the other side of that there are I mean I know a bunch of people in, who are on Instagram who've got loads and loads of followers who say like oh you know I suffer from mental health but then everything is about mental health so they they can't then 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 it's that it's it's a cage either way mm -hmm. um and I think it's the impossibility to change like in a, in, a, in a human organic way that's yeah. also part of it yeah. Yeah. yeah i think it's also um well influencers they're pretty much they're celebrities now they're no different from you know a top actress or a top singer but the way they've come up um a lot of times is is quite different sometimes it can be quite quick and so they don't necessarily have the same kind of support that somebody who's coming up organically would have right which could also be um it's harder for them to cope. So yeah. again, highlighting this rush of that everyone Inst is living right, today. Instant gratification. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, absolutely. So, do we know any bodies that are helping those at risk in the fashion industry or in any creative sector, for that matter? There is a there is a charity called Work It Out. Um, they support um, young women. Well, they support. Yeah, that's mainly what they do. They support young women in the quest to find a job. Um, yeah, they apparently are really nice and i guess like it's there's because it's, it's a lot it's a lot about about mentoring so it's maybe less mental health support but it's about mentoring and i think that in some cases just knowing that there is someone there that you can talk to yeah yeah really helps i think there are very few initiatives i'm going to be honest because we're I not agree. sort of clamoring we're not clamoring to sort of answer that question i know that um there's model health 
or Models Health Pledge, which was um, launched in Amsterdam, and it was it was um, aimed to support models um, and and, um, and their mental health within the fashion sector. I know that Kieran, um, the Kieran Group, um, and LVMH are also giving recognition to um, you know sort of health initiatives um, within the modelling industry and unveiling and sort of a character that bans ultra thin you know, mm. sort of size zero models. Mm. Um, so, you know, that there are there are sort of initiatives and, you know, incentives out there, but they're just not in their, you know, in their numbers. Well, well also, I... Oh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Also the fashion revolution, the any NGO that... Um, oh, absolutely, they're yeah, wonderful. It, they, they work for a greater transparency in the fashion industry. They invented um, the Who Made My Clothes movement on Instagram as well. And I think there's actually... Um, what I'm happy about is actually that technology is trying to make quite a big difference. I mean, I'm not sure how much um, it has made a difference, but I think technology, like the reach is obviously much wider than just an organization that might be able to help in person. But there's so many, um, there's like Paradigm, for instance, which is an emotional intelligence um, platform that's come up quite recently. It was on Crowdcube quite recently. It did really well. And um, so that's supposed to be really helpful in the workplace, um, there's, yeah, there's lots of other mental health apps as well, where you kind of just, um, there's a chatbot that you talk to about how you're feeling and it's able to give you some advice. So at least, um, at an initial stage, I think that's quite important and that could be really useful. Did you hear about, um, how Instagram and Facebook are thinking about cutting likes yeah. out of the, like Instagram Canada, like my friend has Canadian Instagram and she already can't see she can see who the amount of pe people who liked her picture, but other people can't. Oh. You can only see mm -hmm. basically like the people who you follow that also like that, but you don't know the end number. Is that a decline of influencer? This is this is what we were talking about in class, which is really, really interesting. But um, going on the topic of, of just going back to this about the bodies um, that are helping, I think it's really hard because, I mean, personally, I've had to sort of seek people that were able to kind of help me um, – through, I guess, like my mental health journey. But then how do we how do we help other people who don't even know that they're suffering? I think the the real victims of I mean, this whole like social media era and like caring about, you know, like your exterior so much more than your interior are the people that don't even know that they're that they're caring about this so much like um, like I, I was able to fi find like, you know, activists, I think that I, I think it, social media is is really championing a lot of people like Jamila Jamil and like all these activists yeah. who are raising questions, you know, about body image and like yeah. all these amazing, amazing things. But like I had to personally go and find people like this and like find like I don't follow any like thin models that I, I'll never be able to look like because I realize that it harms my mental health. But that was more of something that I independently took on. So how do we kind of position these people to attract people that don't know that they're suffering to help them not suffer. Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. there's right, no there's right. no one that's like kind of grabbing people. Yeah. There are people that are there to attract yeah. people that are like them. Yeah. But how do you know that you're like it's them? It's true. There's no sort of centralized, you know, sort of body that can that's easily accessible that can allow for you to access all those individuals that you've you've come across that can help you along your journey. That's yeah. a really good point. Well then essentially more needs to be done. Yeah, it's not readily available enough right and it's not people. talked about right and then yeah. if we go further down then is anyone who's helping the um, workers in the factories mm. that maybe some of them are also um for example visually impaired people or they have a disability i think there's like, there are things that are being done like i know uh with after reina plaza um collapsed there there was a really big change in Bangladesh about um regu like having the safety and regulations in the factories and there are people that really check and it's not so much of a like I guess like a corrupt um thing anymore like there are things that are being in place but then they'll just change the factory they'll just um outsource even more right. and then it's yeah. hard and like I know that there are people that like small initiatives but I think there's there's definitely a lack of Because we have big to talk about transparency also. Absolutely. Like imagine the children labor that is behind all of this, and we know big brands who actually absolutely yeah. I, I think, but I think that's almost slightly maybe beyond the scope of, our, of looking at mental health because I, I, you know not to say that mental health is exclusively a first world problem, but long but if you if you don't know where your food is coming from, or if you you know if you 
if you if you if you're likely to die at the age of 20 from like a strange disease that you contracted from bad chemicals in a way mental health will be your least concern i think that's i think it's a slightly different conversation in perhaps. fact um what's interesting is that i read somewhere that um countries with lower gdps and people places where people have to work harder to earn um the same amount of money that for instance in the uk mm. or any first world country would be a lot easier to earn they're actually happier yeah because um mm -hmm. they're not thinking as much they're not overthinking things they're just working sleeping eating they're just going about their daily routines the way well technically humans were supposed to like um, you work to live yeah. instead of living to work, right? yeah. which I think is right. like the Western normal, especially like the yeah. American dream kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In conclusion, the fashion industry evidently poses harmful work cultures and environments, but not more so than other creative industries, which is safe to say in the absence of in-depth research. We outlined who are the most vulnerable and believe that everyone is equally at risk. There are not enough initiatives to help these people. Please follow us at Alpha Omega London on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest, where we'll be sharing superb artworks from a hand selection of artists within our network whose pieces depict their feelings on mental health. There you can see works from the incredibly talented Bobby Ray, Brendan Totten, Roa Al Mansouri, Stephanie Mikado, Patrick Gerard, and Clara Catley. Thank you for tuning in and a huge thanks to all our wonderful panelists. Please remember to rate five stars and subscribe. Our next episode, hosted by the lovely Tamara, serves up a more intimate and candid perspective on the topic. Stay tuned for more edifying discussions and to learn from her eclectic mix of panel speakers. <laughs>